Are Manchester City Football Club about to go through a transition slash rebuild? I think this is a conversation that we as fans need to have because if you have noticed via Twitter, via Sky Sports News or wherever, wherever you get your sources and your information from, it is apparent that we are about to possibly say goodbye to quite a few players. Now, obviously, we've already said goodbye to Fernandinho, club captain, club legend. That's never easy to do. And it looks like we've filled that void with Calvin Phillips. Very exciting. It's always exciting getting incomings, but it is, of course, hard to say goodbye to outgoings, especially ones that we hold close to our hearts and we really enjoyed at the club. Now, obviously, it is pretty much done deal that Gabriel Jesus is gone. We have seen images of him in the Emirates in uh, London wearing the Arsenal kit, number nine. Sign seal delivered. It's only a matter of time. Maybe by the time this video gets uploaded, Jesus could have got his here we go or Arsenal could have announced him or maybe he has had his here we go or Arsenal could have announced him basically. Sterling has someone tethered to leave. We're going to talk about it all and see where it leaves our club. Now, I think the best place to start, Joe, is in West London because in West London they clearly wish they were East Manchester. Chelsea Football Club and Todd Bowley, Bowie clearly woke up with a feeling one morning this week that they we want to be Manchester City Football Club and in order to do so we kind of have to buy everything. They're trying to buy Mary D's bar. They're trying to buy uh, our club shop. They're trying to buy our fans. They're trying to buy everything off us. They want Nathan Ake. They want Raheem Sterling. They want they want to recreate what we have or bring some of our champions vibe down to West London if you like. Listen, I think. The one that seems to possibly be closest, or maybe they're both pretty close, but the one I saw spoken about today the most was Nathan Ake. Chelsea feel they're close to an agreement with City for Nathan Ake. The fee is in around £40 million. Now, of course, let's bear in mind Nathan Ake has been at Chelsea. He's a Chelsea reject. Uh, it would be a bit weird if he was to go back there and give them give him their time. But, uh, Joe, Nathan Ake, I think, is the best place to start. We will get on to Sterling, of course, because Chelsea seem to have a, an interest in him as well. How do you feel about this? I think, before you say it, sorry, I think... We have to remember with Nathan Ake, he proved last season that he is very much more than just a squad player. He was called upon multiple times last season when we we had a lot of centre-back crisis last season. And he really proved he's a top, top player. I think we would be silly to let this guy go. But if the fee is right, are we silly to hold on to him? Um, If the fee is 40 million, then I say just reject that and hold out for more because... Listen, at the end of the day, we were quoting Newcastle £50 million because we're in a position where we don't need to sell him. He's got three years left on his contract as it stands. He's happy with being a fourth choice. He's happy at winning trophies. He even said himself that he looks forward to trying to play more. Obviously, it still lingers in the back of his mind, or it must do, that he used to play for Chelsea and he came through their academy at one stage. So, obviously, he's still got feelings for them. But, again, like we paid £40 million for him. He he's not on a currently expiring contract. He doesn't have two years or less left on his contract. We don't need to go and go. Oh yeah, we won't make a profit on this player. We, ideally, we need to make a profit. So I'm. Um, I think unless we get somewhere closer to fifty, I mean, of course, we wanted. I think it was fifty to sixty for Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal. We ended up getting forty five plus ten, which was sort of a meet in the middle. Um, something like that might be able to happen, where there might be a forty five plus five or a forty five plus ten for Ake, but. At the end of the day, City aren't going to stop him from leaving. If he wants to go, he wants to go. We it, There's nothing to suggest that he desperately wants to go. Obviously, he'd probably be keen on going there because he might play more, but there's nothing to suggest that he's like, I want to go, I don't want to be here anymore. So I think it's a case of if they pay the money, he'll go, simple as that. And as far as replacing him, I think there was... Uh, a t a t there's been so much information. I think it was Matt Law was saying that... Um, City would obviously want to find a replacement first before they sold him. I don't know whether we would. We've shown in previous seasons, nineteen twenty prime example, we let Vincent Company club captain walk out the door and went, or oh, Stones will surely just step into his place this season and through injuries and just poor form. That never happened. I think we'd possibly see a, a similar situation again if Ake was to leave. We've just extended Luke and Bette's contract till I think twenty twenty seven. So you might see him becoming a, a replacement. So I think it's progressing, of course. Chelsea are wanting to buy, I think, three of our players. It's Sterling, Ake, and Zinchenko are the, the three that were linked. Zinchenko, the quietest. But at the moment, it seems that Ake is progressing. We know Chelsea want two centre backs, two wingers. They seem to have found an agreement with Rafinha. That one isn't over the line yet. But listen, if they pay the money, they can have the player. It's as simple as that. But I don't think the 40 million is, you know, truthful at all. I don't think City will accept that. 
I wouldn't accept that if I was City because I think the value Nathan Ake adds in support for our two centre backs that, that usually start in Laporte and Diaz or he could even throw stones in there it, it's it's priceless he, he is such a good cover that I don't think 40 million is worth it but kind of banding in Sterling Ake and Zinchenko together where do you feel this Chelsea interest comes from in, in our squad all of a sudden now obviously I know clubs uh, who, who aren't at the top which Chelsea aren't right now so that's fact we'll always look to the team at the top and say can we get some of their players or can we model ourselves on them where is this coming from and why 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 is Inchenko as well I, I mean Ben Chilwell is back from injury now he's back fit uh, will they plan on playing him in midfield it's an interesting one and he's also been linked with Everton Zinchenko how do you feel about the whole Chelsea thing uh, first and foremost and then Zinchenko I, I, do, I honestly I don't know why Chelsea have even decided to do this like I get it. We've won titles. We've won it. Like our squad is so successful and there's so much competition that they might think that they could just come in and basically go, there's so much competition there. Why don't you come over to us? Because you're going to play, you know, you're going to play more because we don't have that much competition. We're not at the top. We want to get there, but you know, we can give you regular game time. So maybe that's it. Obviously the new takeover, new owners, he's trying to stamp his authority on this transfer market. Let everyone know he's willing to spend money um, make things happen in this window. But I mean, I think Zinchenko is, it's an interesting one because he was, he was dead set on leaving um, because he wanted to play in midfield. We were going to sign Cucurella. We're probably still going to sign Cucurella considering I think Sterling's pretty much out the door. We'll use that money to go and go and finalise that deal. Um, but I think with Zinchenko, it it kind of died down, and then Chelsea were interested in loads of our players, so it kind of came back, you know, came back at the water again. Where Chelsea were interested in Zinchenko, I think Marcus Alonso is a free agent, or he is next year. Um, we should leave him with only Chilwell on uh, that side to cover left back. I, he wouldn't get in Chelsea's midfield, so I don't know why he'd even want to move there if he plays in midfield. Because I mean, let's be honest, they have <laughs> they have good midfielders, not as good as ours, but they still have good midfielders who are better there than him. So I don't know where that one's come from. In all honesty, maybe it's just because they know he's leaning towards exiting to play in a, a better role or get just play more in general. So maybe they're going, oh, well, we'll take him because he wants out. Um, I don't know whether Zinchenko comes one, Zinchenko one comes from, and then Sterling. It's just a case of this is what I've said before. I've said that Pep has told him the truth that no one is a guaranteed starter in his team, and Tuchel has told him that he'll start every week, which is what he wants to hear. And I think that's about as simple as it gets for Sterling. He wants to play football, go off and play football. I'm not a fan of him going and joining a Premier League rival, but so be it. If he wants to leave that bad, then he can go and do that. We'll keep winning and. I mean, he might not, but that's on him. It will be annoying to see any of those three players go because Sterling probably slightly more than Ake and Zinchenko. Is, uh, they're, they're all, you know, fantastic squad players to have and they're great servants. And uh, The overall point of this video was essentially to talk about these outcomes and what it means for the club. Now, just to add to that list of Sterling, Ake and Zinchenko, Romeo Lavia now looks like he's going to go to Southampton. I think Liam Delap is negotiating some sort of a, a loan deal possibly to Southampton as well. I could be wrong on that. Zach Steffen, I would imagine, is on the way out. Howard Bellas has gone to join Vincent Company on loan at Burnley. Egan Riley has gone on a permanent. There is quite a few outgoings, and some of them, yes, they are young, but those young players have all you know contributed in their own ways, and they provide support, and they're going to be that bit older. Are we going through a transition and we're not realising it so much because of the, the incomings we have? Obviously, it's great you sign possibly Cucurella, Phillips, uh, De, um, Haaland and Alvarez, but losing these players on top of Jesus, and I know it, it's not very likely right now, but it is a possibility that we lose Bernardo Silva as well. These are all massive voids. People are talking about Manchester City moving into the season ahead as it's a whitewash. City are going to win this league. And now I'm sure there's plenty of people watching this video going, I don't think that, I don't think that. But you best believe the wider media and, and the public will, will be saying, City, who've just signed Haaland, throw him into their squad. It's going to be a whitewash. They'll win the league by March or they should win the quadruple. And they'll put untold pressure on City. But I think we have to take a step back and realise that losing these kind of players, and especially if we don't replace them, it's going to have an effect on the the dressing room and how we you know we we go forward. How is there a problem here that we're not looking at? I don't know. I'm trying to play devil's advocate, Joe. How do you feel about this amount of players leaving? If we are to lose Sterling, Ake, Zinchenko, and all those young players, do we need to add more players? Even though we've already we signed potentially four, definitely three. <sighs> In my opinion, I would like to see more come in. I'd like to see more replacements because when you look at the numbers last season, we have 
I think the way that most people summarised it is we have the most talented squad, but we don't have the deepest squad. If you look at Chelsea and Liverpool, they don't have the talent off the bench that we have. We have world-class players coming off the bench. They don't have as many, but we don't have the sheer numbers. They have bigger squad sizes, so when they go through injury crisis, they still have players that they can rely on. If we go through an injury crisis, especially defensively, we ended up playing Fernandinho there. We ended up, I think, uh, it was all over the place at one point defensively going into the, the last few games of the season, crunch time, having Fernandinho at the back. It's not ideal and rushing stones and Walker back from injury. And, you know, we don't have the bodies, but I think with the talent that we have in our squad is great. And I think that doesn't help contribute to, to players wanting to leave because they know that in majority of clubs in the world so that they would start week in week out it's just in this one case the club that they're at right now they don't start week in week out so i can get why they want to leave but at the same time we can't just allow dressing room leaders experienced players to walk out the door and bring in players who don't have as much experience and we often say this we've said this about Grealish. we said it about Mares. Players take time to gel, especially in a Pep Guardiola system. Players take time to gel. If we're losing half a squad and buying half a new one or using youngsters to fill the gaps in the squad, they're going to need an adaption period. And when the league is this tight, when you've got two teams getting 90-plus points a season and you can only really afford to lose two, maybe three, maybe four games a season, you can't afford to start the season slow and lose ground early on and have that adaption period. So I think it is a bit of a transition. Of course, a lot of them names are young players who they're at that point now where it's regular football or, you know, they're just going to run out of their contract and they'll go for free. So I'm happy to receive it be receiving little fees i think the one name that i missed out on that list was a dozy he seems to be off for 10 million off to germany so i think with the young players i'm not too bothered because a lot of them i mean you look at lavia i think lavia is great i think he's got a lot of potential but we've just signed another holding midfielder he's gonna get not a chance in this team right now so i think with the young players i understand the frustration because they want to see as many young players come through the ranks and actually do well because it'll save City a bit of money, even though the money shouldn't really concern anyone because it's not our money and we know we have quite a bit. Um, but it's the players like Sterling who's been here for a long time, who's a leader in the dressing room. He's won the captain's armband. He's, you know, he is a leader. He has that experience. And City don't look to be replacing him. I think that's a mistake. I think... Whilst you still have the bodies and on that right wing, you'll have Mares and you're hoping Palmer can step up into that role, but it's too samey. They're two players that are very similar. And then Palmer is you're replacing someone with a lot of experience, with someone very young with little to no experience. So it's a risky move. It is a transitional period. I don't think people are really I think I was aware of this because as soon as you see two centre forwards walk in through the door we're going to have to change something anyway. So we're already making a pretty big change to the way we play and the way we do things. So maybe this is just the right time. I think, yeah, you kind of hit it on the nail on the head with your last point there, which is that I think as fans, it's not as straightforward as these incomings we brought in, the four player or three at the minute and possibly four players soon. It's not going to be a simple case of they will come in and fit in like a glove uh, to what has already been going on or, or the system that we currently play. I think we should expect and look towards a bit of a reshuffle, a bit, a bit of a, a, a transition, really, a transition in both the squad, the, the faces and the, the profiles in the squad, but of course the way we play as well. You know, you bring in these different types of players, a natural left back, an actual out and out left back, and Cooker will provide us with a different option. Calvin Phillips, great player. Rodri, great player. Two different players, different option. Then you bring Alvarez in, different option. Haaland, an option we haven't had in years, an actual striker. So basically, what we're saying is, how do Man City move forward? What do we look at? What should we look at in the future? Is there a problem? Is there a transition? Get down below in the comments. Let us know your thoughts. We're not saying there is a problem. We're very excited about the whole thing. As fans, this whole thing is very exciting. Players will come and go, but we always enjoy the whole process. Get down below in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on these players that are linked with outgoings. Who would you like to see come in and replace them if needs be? How do you think City will play moving forward? And also, before you click off, do us a massive favour and leave a quick like on the video. It helps us massively. And subscribe if you're new. We're on the road to 3K. New videos every single Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Get down below and tell us some video ideas if there's anything you'd like us to talk about. Good night and God bless.